You're listening to the Ready or Not podcast with me, Mabel Golden, and today we are digging into curating life. I have asked my friend Jess to join me on the podcast today, and I am so excited. We've just been going through what we're <laughs> going to talk about, and I'm literally so excited to talk about this with you. Thank you to everyone that's tuning in. Um, welcome back to the YouTube channel, or welcome back to wherever you're listening to this. And Jess, welcome to the Ready or Not podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. I feel like <laughs> this is long overdue. It is. It is. And we could probably talk for six hours yeah if, we could if we like <laughs> if we had the time but we're gonna try and fit everything we want to say into one episode yeah, we are um i was really excited to have this conversation with you to share your insights and your journey to the ready or not podcast community i get so many questions about freelancing and my career journey and i bet you do as well yeah yeah, yeah. every single day yeah <laughs> all the time so let, let's start there if you can Certainly. tell us about your transition to yes. you going freelance and what you're doing um my listeners would love to hear of course so i went freelance last august so august 2023 yeah the main reason i did that even though i had the dream to do it for a long long time um i actually fell pregnant so my baby is almost one years one year old um, I was working full time for a big hotel here called Media One. Everyone should know that. Um, I was head of marketing. I had an amazing job. Fell pregnant um, and kind of was. A, I didn't really know what to do. Um, in Dubai, you actually only get forty five days maternity leave right. out here, which is nothing. Yeah. Um, and you have to kind of make the decision: what you're going to do, leave your job or go back to work. What the majority of people have to in Dubai. It's a yeah. very expensive place to live yeah, yeah, on yeah. one salary um so I asked for more time didn't get it which is fair enough there's a huge business levels in the company yeah so I decided I'm gonna leave my job and open my own thing and I did it and, and here you are yeah and I jumped straight into it and it was very scary but it's yeah. the best thing I've ever done yeah um, yeah to have that balance with my baby so so you were really looking for being present and that being time that like nice. you're, you're not I'm not gonna say you're a stay-at-home mum at all yeah no. you are working. <laughs> which is so a very hard, hard job yeah, yeah just which that. is also very difficult um, <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah what were your kind of intentions and priorities let's say that you maybe yeah, like you couldn't get from staying in a more traditional yeah nine um, to five well, the hours in Dubai, especially in marketing, are mm. 10 to 12 hours a day. Yeah. And the thought of putting my child in childcare or even with a nanny yeah. is kind of scary, especially when you have a child, your your brain switches straight away and you can't explain it until you've, you've done that, yeah. obviously. Um, and the thought of being away from her and being in work just scared me. I just wanted to do it myself. So I thought, you know what, even if I have a nanny, which I don't have still, and I am planning to do, at least I know she's at home with me and I can work in my office and do both. And if I only want to work a couple days a week and get all of my work, consolidated into those days yeah I have that balance with my child where I'm present which is so important so important a lot of people in Dubai have to have nannies and they're not in their child's life and they're closer to the nanny and that really scared me I didn't yeah. want what's the point of having a family if yeah I mean yeah, yeah I'm just yeah. lucky enough to yeah to do sure. that no that's such a that's such a great point and let's just one thing you said there is I think so unfortunately accurate with Dubai is that it is long hours you know it is very much. hustle culture let's take a moment to talk about what that's been like because i relate to that so much yeah. as well is i think you know what it is i think it's almost like i didn't realize i was in it until i stepped out of it yeah and now very true. i'm kind of like whoa we are breaking our backs 10 to yeah. 12 hour days like you said yeah, yeah. um you know working well, working weekends working late into the evenings yeah. and it's so normalized yeah, and yeah. i think it's Definitely. almost like we we've it's all feeding into each other because yeah. everybody in Dubai. This is where I think Dubai is such a unique kind of situation because if you imagine we're a city of expats, right? Yeah. So we need to work to be here. So we, we can't yeah. we can't just be here and be sat at home. Um, true. You know, like waiting. You, you have to literally be working to live here. So yeah. I think because of that, it's almost like everywhere you go people are hustling grinding yeah, and i true. feel like it's like an echo chamber i personally felt like i really absorbed all that um pressure yeah and yeah, yeah. yeah and i bet it was the same for you working in such a fast-paced environment yeah. like so much to do you know yeah and it's so competitive like if you don't keep up with your job you're kind of gone like mm -hmm. there is someone else coming in another country or in this country about yeah. to take your job yeah so you know that and you have to keep so doing it man. it's so cutthroat yeah. that's you're a number really yeah and yeah 
So it's very, very tough. But, it's hard. But then if you're a very business-minded and career-driven person, mm. you have to do that. Like, I remember doing yeah. late nights at home. If I didn't have the time in the office to do it, I would stay all night working. And it's... Like, because so you want you to. Yeah. yeah, because you want yeah. to. Because I think, yeah, I relate to that as well. Because I think... For me, I really put a lot of my identity into being a career girl. Yeah, you know, I sure. I was so proud of being, uh, of having this job. You know, when I moved to Dubai, it was the one thing that you know I that I could use as my identity. Yeah, and then yeah. when I was building my business, I felt like that was times ten. Yeah, because <laughs> it's kind of becomes the thing that people know you for. Yeah. Oh, she's the girl that you know is killing it, is bossing it, yeah, is yeah. literally smashing Definitely. it, working with all the big clients. But then yeah. once you realise, okay. Hang on a sec. I've I've just internalised all this external pressure yeah, yeah. and put so much pressure on ourselves. Oh, yeah, we're so young and as well. And I, <laughs> we, just, we just hold up. Like we're literally both yeah. so young. In fact, like <laughs> let, I'm 25. Just for anybody that doesn't know, Jess, and I, I'm 30. Yeah. So, so unfortunately, it's still young, but still so it's young. a scary still age. So young. <laughs> still so young to like have the career. That yeah, you no, had yeah, it is. And it everything. Is. Um, and I think that's just. I think people love to know. Yeah. how people's journeys have been so I thought that was yeah. just quite a nice way to no, yeah. mention that very but, um, very true so guys one thing that I've not really um sat down and talked about on the podcast yet is my decision to scale back my business and most of you will know that I have been so dedicated to social flex for oh, yeah. years you know past few years and it's really just been my everything my absolute everything and I think one of the things that led me to want to scale it back was due to my mental health and trying to put my rebalance my life which is exactly what we're here to talk about in this podcast so now I'm in a position where I am working much less than I was and the hardest part of making this decision for me was actually the identity part of it yeah. I was feeling like who am I without my job or without my business and I think yeah. that's where I really wanted to mention this kind of um, mention something that I was actually my therapist that like like t said this to me. If you imagine your life is like a pie and like you're okay. putting all your effort into your career, as soon yeah. as that's taken away, it's all gone. When okay. you, if you whereas really we should be aiming to have you know I'm I'm a boss on one slice yes. of the pie. <laughs> I'm a girlfriend. I'm a sister. I'm yeah. a friend. I'm a daughter. I'm just trying to show up in other areas of my life. You know, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a, a yogi. Yes, you are. <laughs> that's new. Maybe with a yogi. That's, though, that's, that's, I am now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to get that through you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm such a yogi. <laughs> no, but like I have hobbies is what I'm trying yeah. to say. Like I have, um, you know, I'm, I'm a girlfriend and I'm showing up for my relationship and, yeah. and I think it's remembering that you are so much more than just one thing is going to relieve so much of the pressure like, yeah yeah true putting yeah. that effort into every slice rather than just like focusing on one thing at a time exactly exactly because exactly. i think that's what made it so like difficult for me when i decided to work less and i decided yeah. to say no to projects and i decided to um you know not work with a team anymore i put yeah. my whole personality on being social flexes owner and founder and, and being a yeah. young entrepreneur and I really you know of course I'm proud of it and I was I was rightly so proud of these things but I think remembering that we are not our jobs is very true yeah such a bit like that is a big weight yeah off. and it's yeah. kind of like you're always chasing the dream and it's like if you're always up there then yeah. if you dip again you're gonna make yourself yeah. you know stress I mean if you had a bad month you're gonna be like, why true. why does it happen when you know, you don't need to always have that pressure on yourself. It's mm -hmm. it's a roller coaster, mm -hmm. but it should be. You true. Don't, you don't always have to be the top. You don't true. always, you know. True. Yeah. True. Actually, let's just let that sink in because you don't need to always be on top, and no. you don't need to always have it all figured out. Yeah. And I think that was me. Yeah. We're all winging it. We're really. all winging it, and <laughs> we're all just figuring it out for the first time. I think I put a lot of pressure on myself to yeah to to have it figured out, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more later in the podcast. But I. Feel like I put such pressure on myself to have everything figured out by a certain time. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. like, I want to be a business owner by twenty twenty three, so that I can. <laughs> so do you know yeah. what I mean? So that yeah, I, yeah. I want to hire the team, so by the time I'm twenty five, I can be this. So yeah, I, yeah. I want to be this, so that I, by the time I'm thirty, I'm going to start a family. Blah, blah, blah. And right. I was like <laughs> driven by these timelines, like literally driven by these timelines yeah. and this pressure. And then once I kind of made this decision, that I was like. Hang on, the only person expecting that of me is me. <laughs> yeah, true. Like, literally. Yeah. 
It's like the world is like waking you up and you're like, yeah, oh, actually. I'm, I'm just like, and yeah. I'm just like, oh, cool. Like, I can yeah. actually just have a good time. Yeah. Whew. So, yeah, that's my update, guys. Um, so, I'm that's quite excited for you. Yeah, I'm really excited. excited. I'm honestly loving it. So, my situation is now that I'm working with much less clients. Um, I'm just working like three days a week Amazing. to take time to really like um, nurture my mental health, essentially. And kind of um, as well as a lot of other wellness practices. One of them being working less, but also, you know, over a year of therapy and, you know, doing daily wellness practices, which I could talk about in another episode. That's not what we're here to talk about, but just just so you know, like, it's, I think, um, working less is not going to fix everything. There is, there is so many complex layers to it, and that's what I've really been learning. But one of the things that I'm, I'm just loving is reconnecting with all those other slices of the time. Yeah. That's yeah. a really great, great way to look up. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, so that's why I feel like this conversation is such a perfect time for me in my life yeah. as well. And, and, and me too. I, I love that you also have your own journey to share. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. now that Posey's Definitely. nearly a year. I know, it's gone so quickly. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Posey's obviously nearly a year old. Yes. And you've been crazy. freelancing since last August. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like, if you don't mind me saying, you're kind of in the thick of it right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Whereas I've been freelancing for three years wow it's gone so it's gone so quick <laughs> um but yeah so I feel yeah. like I remember being in the early stages and having to do so much learning and in fact still learning like there, yeah. you never stop learning no definitely um, not. how are you finding it what's yeah. the challenges that you face so um well the biggest challenge at the beginning was having the kind of confidence to yeah. do it that's that's what I would okay, say so before you even started yeah before I started yeah, yeah the confidence yeah. because you don't think you're good enough or you think there's so many different people that are doing this am mm -hmm. I gonna you know even make it into the industry yeah. but one thing actually you told me was there are so many people that are looking for marketing and social media help that there's it's not competition like mm -hmm. there is enough for everyone there's and problem. that's that's such a good like you know paragraph to tell me because I was like okay I can do it and it yeah. kind of made me do it um, hey, so thank that you. makes me so happy to like, hear that <laughs> and just to think about that now because yeah we really like yeah it came yeah I, things, I remember like supporting you in this decision yeah. and I I that was me as well like I actually mm -hmm. even though I didn't know anyone in my personal circle I yeah. found people online that had done it and, really yeah and that really helped me and yeah. in that in the way because kind of you do need to someone you need to see someone doing it yeah to, to know it's possible to know you can do it yeah to know yeah, just yeah. to see what they do so yeah I, I found like YouTubers and people Amazing. just online like that I could like I don't know just thought oh interesting like yeah they're just doing it they're, yeah they literally just, just decided it. to do it and that's yeah. what I'm gonna do so yeah I, I remember being in yeah that, like you really yeah. <laughs> phase and yeah you're not ready at the time no. And I think there's so many things that are doubting in your mind, like, to be honest, with, like, all the finance stuff and also, like, getting a you know, business license yeah. and you have to get your own visa. And that's something that used to stick in my mind, like, how am I going to do that? How expensive yeah. is it? And yeah, when you yeah. actually, because you helped me with that as yeah. well, and my other friend that owns a company, when you know you can do it and someone does it for you, that's done. You're like, okay, it's now like, I can oh, begin. Like, everything's figure out. Yeah, and yeah. it's so easy when yeah, you do yeah. it, and, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, a big hurdle I would say was the initial getting the clients. I don't know, I didn't know how to do it. I didn't, okay. because obviously you have to start your brand. You're creating like your logo, your name, yeah. you're registering the name. Yeah. And then you need to start your social media page. That's not always the first thing. I remember you told me you didn't do that first. Yes, oh, I can talk about this for ages <laughs> I know. as well. Because I was freelancing for over a year. In fact, I think it was 18 months in. Yeah. It was only when I hired my first employee that I actually made a business page. Wow, okay. Because I was just running off of my own personal network. Wow. I felt like I didn't Perfect. need, I, I didn't have any need to have a business page or anything like that because yeah. was, for me it was all through networking. And yeah. I know you've also had yeah. your network really support you in yeah, finding definitely. clients. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I guess that's the two different ways you could do it. Yeah. Because I remember you were working and then you did it kind of, you had freelancers yes. as well. Yeah, yeah. So for anyone that doesn't know, I think I have talked about this in other episodes, but I freelanced on the side of my job for yeah. a good year. It was a, it was a solid year, and that was me dipping my toe in the water and seeing what it was like before yeah. actually making the commitment. And like I know sustainable kind of exactly, you know. and it was a lot of work because obviously you're kind of working yeah. as well as working. <laughs> yeah, I can't but, imagine. Yeah, so it was a lot, but I was yeah. so in it and so excited that I was I was obsessed. Honestly, yeah. I was so obsessed and excited that I could potentially do this full time. Definitely. That yeah, I remember it was literally just. I was, I was, it was all I thought about. I was so excited to like, <laughs> you get, just knew. yeah, it was yeah. new. It was fun. And I couldn't believe that I would, I could have, um, am I saying this right? Like I couldn't believe I had like autonomy. Is that yeah. Like oh, yeah, control. Yeah. yeah. 
I control of your career if yeah. you just go one avenue, kind of. Exactly. Yeah. I couldn't believe that I could have autonomy over my income and not yeah. just wait for the end of the month and get paid the same. You know, it yeah, didn't yeah. matter whether I did a, showed up at work and did a crap job or if I showed up at work and did a great job. Yeah. But whereas with freelancing on the side, I realised, hang on, I set the prices. I set my How much time this takes. And I just it just opened my world yeah really so yeah it was a good year of freelancing yeah yeah, yeah. before i did even made the commitment because the so commitment is hard it is hard oh it is hard yeah and i feel like i i should have done it that way but i didn't and yeah. that's another that's like another hurdle i remember being like hard. on my short maternity leave of 45 days and yeah. i was like okay i'm gonna quit my job and then and do this and then i sat there at home right i need to think of a name and i was like what names am i going to use because obviously there's so many names that people already yeah. have um, and then I created a page and it kind of went from there and I was like, okay, so what am I going to do with for my portfolio? Because yeah. obviously all my portfolio is working for other companies. Yeah. So it's not my own freelance work, but then I know all the stuff I did for them. So that's mm-hmm. how you create a portfolio, which I know you, yes, you've done exactly. something about like all your experience. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so I had to make that portfolio before going to a client mm-hmm. because they need to know what you've done. So it's yeah. all a process before you do it, before even getting a client. So it's, it's quite long winded what you could do it. And then... Yeah. And yeah, then, yeah. yeah it's long winded, but I think I I don't know for you like I was very much just fueled by the yeah. excitement and and definitely you know, of wanting to build something that's really mine. Yeah. How has it been then now that you have clients and you are like you're doing it like yeah. how's how has it been like the early stages yeah. of of doing it? No, like I love it. I think once you've got a couple of clients, you're so confident and you're yeah. like, okay, now I know what to do. And you yeah. you make little mistakes along the way with I guess pricing your packages. You know, yeah, you know, doing it like what's the word um cheaper yeah. cheaper than yeah, you yeah, should true. um because if you kind of put your feelers out to other agencies uh, lots of people do it quite high but, yeah you know it, it depends on the on the client um so yeah you become more confident and then you kind of know who you want to work with yeah and you can turn this people is away it's <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> you're i feel like in the stage of like learning to say no yeah things definitely at the start, yeah. that what but what you what you do when you start out is say yes to everything because yeah. you're like so honored that somebody would want yeah yeah, yeah. To, but like, you trust me so you're like, oh, you trust me <laughs> Yes, okay, great, I'll definitely work with you. And then whereas versus like three years in now, I'm like, no, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Like I I'm my like what I will do, my criteria is so narrow now that yeah, but that's like what happens. Yeah. That you learn and then you say you learn the power of saying no. Definitely. Yeah. And you, and like we were saying about mental health, there are certain clients that kind of don't have boundaries with you yeah. and you need to set the boundaries at the beginning with your packages because if you're saying you want to do three to five posts or stories a week however the packages are yeah and they're coming back they want to change this 10 million times yeah. or this it's like that yeah. takes time it, hours yes. and that's money so yeah. you, you, we can either charge you extra or you can have another package and it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. you're you need to make those boundaries so like, literally <laughs> the criteria gets yeah. smaller and, smaller yeah. and the contracts get longer yeah, longer yeah. literally Definitely. like everything that you learn that you just no for next yeah time. yeah for so sure. that's yeah that's yeah. a positive and a negative because, yeah true which is great is, so. yeah yeah so true what about the wins of the first like what, what like what's going well let's talk about okay. what you're enjoying with like um we talked okay. a bit about the challenges yes yeah. what's going well i would say having like the creativeness if that's the word being creative yeah. creative yeah, yeah. with my clients mm-hmm. like I kind of like scaled it down recently, uh, like you have. Not scaled it down, yeah. like you have, but um, I got rid of, not rid of, um, paused the contract on a few clients because yeah. they were very, very full on, mm-hmm. where I couldn't put as much energy into each client as a whole. Like mm-hmm. I like to put in equal amounts of energy into each client as you should. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I scaled it down where now I can be so much more creative with those people. I can sit mm. there and focus like one day I'm dedicating to this client and like so much more creativeness comes into my brain and yeah. I'm like, this is what we can do for that, that and that. Yeah, rather yeah. than you know when you're so busy you can't, can't think be creative, yeah. You get like so a true. writer's block and yeah. and that is a massive thing for me. I like to be able to be calm and creative and that's a positive of hiring an agency because yeah. like for example when I worked for like my old my old employer we were only doing what we were doing before brands and it was like it got repetitive whereas yeah. when you work with clients like new things come into new your brain ideas, yeah and look, new projects and i know yeah. that, like we've often joked about like how many businesses that we're gonna yeah, start yeah. like in other lives <laughs> like we are gonna have so many businesses yeah we are <laughs> so that is the kind of like once you're in that kind of space where you're dipping your toe into different projects all the time 
you kind of like I love it as well yeah. so I totally know what you mean it's like when you're working on one project that's really fun that's when you find that your mind wanders and then yeah just, that's the fun of it like, the fun of it comes back yeah, yeah yeah that's a really good one yeah and then you even say to your clients well, why don't you do this why don't you open mm. that business yeah 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 you kind of yeah, become not... friends <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah literally yeah I feel like that's so me yeah well. yeah <laughs> Yeah, having room for being creative is what makes it fun. And there's a lot of other benefits that come with being self-employed. But, you know, we're not trying to say to everybody watching this has to be self-employed. There's a lot of different definitions of work-life balance. Yep. And I think one of, the, one of my kind of shifts in perceptions... And I don't know if this has kind of come with growing up a bit. Okay. Did I tell you about, you know how when you're 25, like your brain oh, yeah. is fully developed? Yeah, because it happens when you're 30. Not that, but it happens. You oh, okay. Your mind changes when you're 30 again in a different way. Interesting. So it's a different phase. So, like so maybe saying. that's just what's happened to both of us. Maybe. Like, I feel like since I turned 25, I've had a completely different perception on Okay. Life. Wow. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> no, I, I feel like it sounds so silly, but like, I'm so true. A like, quarter life crisis. Can't, can't, it's not a crisis. No, like, what? Um, a quarter life, like, um, revelation. Okay, yeah. Say. Yeah, yeah. Like, a, I don't know. Yeah. I epiphany. Feel, epiphany kind yeah. of thing. Or just, yeah, I just feel like I look back and I think, I think about my, you know, 22, 23 year old self and I'm kind of like, okay, I see what you were thinking there, but I don't, <laughs> like, that's not, that's not me right yeah. now. Um, and especially so when it comes to what I'm about to explain, which I think is also a bit of a generational thing. So when we say work-life balance, there's a lot of benefits that come from, let's say, working for yourself or working less. Um, one of the things that I think was so tempting to me when I was 22, 23, yeah. was the ability to make a lot more money than I did working full-time. Definitely. Yeah. And obviously that is very appealing. And to most yeah, people, yeah. that is a want. And it's, uh, you know, I'm definitely not yeah. saying that I'm going to, like, <laughs> relinquish all my like material possessions and yeah, like, yeah. you know running off to live in the forest <laughs> but be nice. I do feel like my uh, like my priorities now are much more about relating to time freedom and yeah. um and, and yeah having the freedom to choose what you do on a daily basis on a yeah. daily basis being able to decide your own schedule um like I think slow it's, life yeah life. slow yeah. living so, exactly it's actually the first podcast episode that I did of the radio Lots podcast okay and so yeah I actually can't believe that when I was interviewing Marie about slow living I feel like I just didn't understand it in my head like right. I, I loved the idea but I never truly understood it and now yeah. I feel like I have I now it's my full fully developed frontal lobe <laughs> there we go like, oh that's why we <laughs> like slow living um but yeah, and I think that relates to kind of your story as well, is because you wanted to have freedom to spend time with your daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. so what does work-life balance mean for you, and yeah. how is it shaping like the life that you're building for yourself? So obviously, exactly what you're saying, I like to be able to wake up in the morning and not have the pressure of my alarm going off. Mm. I mean, my alarm clock now is the baby, but that's fine. That's um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but in the mornings, I don't. I make sure I don't work in the morning. I have everything yeah. scheduled to go out yeah. as it leaves on social media. Yeah. Um, in the morning, we won't. I won't look at my phone. I will have breakfast, and this is what I wanted to do with her. I wanted to be present, but then as soon as she goes down for her nap, because obviously they need to have a schedule. Yeah. That is when I'll smash out two hours of work, mm. and this is. I've had to transition. It's not been easy but it's trying to find that balance mm. you can't get a child into a routine until they're about four months and before that I was putting my hair out I'm like how oh, can but, I do this yeah. like I, I was like have I made the wrong decision yeah um but as soon as she was in a routine I was like oh finally I've I've worked out how to do it yeah um so I do it in this way I play with her have a nap I work and I do it in that and then yeah. in that way and then as soon as she goes to bed at seven o'clock I'll do a few hours in the evening mm. but that's not every single day that is about three days a week yeah. and, and when my partner is off which is random as well um that day is dedicated to family time mm. if I was back in the office it would be Monday to Friday I wouldn't see him I wouldn't see my baby and then that would just scared the hell out of me yeah because that's not a life why would I have a family if I couldn't spend time yeah. with my child, which is obviously very, very much a privilege. It is a privilege, but I love that the, these are the kind of conversations to spread awareness and yeah. to let people know, you know, maybe you're watching this and you work full time and yeah. like one day you do want to have a family and Definitely. flexible work options, you know, and I, yeah. think, I think, I hope in fact that in employers are also allowing a bit more flexibility. I agree. Yeah. We see, we're seeing that a bit, but I think I'm just so glad that we're in this generation where we have access to do yeah. things like this because Definitely. this hasn't really existed no. for us before. You know, we can yeah. work online. Yeah, we can yeah. do Zoom meetings. We can Definitely. do 
and flexi time and, yeah. and remote work and oh god remote work has changed my life yeah it has absolutely changed my life and I, I agree didn't even know it was a thing until covid yeah like, i was gonna say so covid is sparked COVID, yeah it. covid has essentially triggered everybody's realization yeah. that we don't need to sit behind no. a desk you know Definitely not. nine hours a day no and we can actually have a, a different approach yeah. to life and we can be even more like you know what's work ethic what's the word um productive we can yeah. be more productive not sitting under a desk True. and, and yes. being at home and zoom meetings are really good because you actually all focus like if you're yeah. sitting in an office sometimes people are just daydreaming or I, I used to work in an office when i was like so tired i genuinely used to you know how like funky modern offices yeah or sometimes have like bean bags or like pool tables whatever um yeah i literally used to just like go find a bean bag and just like not do anything and just like try and waste time because yeah, i was yeah. just so exhausted and and burnt out and just Definitely. literally could not be creative like no. i was saying could not find exactly. the time whereas now i think anyone that is freelance or self-employed will relate to this when you have like work time like for you when it's when posey's having a nap yeah um like or for me when i'm you know on on the work days that i've got now i'll be like okay this is focused yeah. we are so efficient definitely so like there is no distractions it is literally all out yeah. work and then every you know every all the time that you're then not working you can actually enjoy yeah you can relax yeah knowing everything's done you don't need to be kind of you know uh bums on seats just to fill the yeah. office yeah because you're doing it for yourself you know if i sit down for two yeah. hours and get this done yeah. i have the whole evening to myself yes and exactly. no one's going to tell you you need to be at work this time that time and it's like exactly it's the best like it's the best balance and anyone can do it like, yeah it's i love this shift in our generation's kind of priorities that we yeah. I, th I think it's it's sometimes kind of i don't know i, I don't know how to feel a bit about it because obviously we all want to have um you know security we all want to be able to yeah. like um retire or whatever we've all got ambitions in that respect but i think i kind of love at the same time that our generation might be the ones yeah maybe we don't own a house but we do yeah, which is fine have a you know like yeah it's, which is so fine isn't it? but <laughs> yeah just as an example yeah. maybe we are the one the, Maybe we are the generation to not own a house, but we are the generation to have so many memories and, yeah. you know, so many experiences and just really living our day-to-day -day life so fully. Yeah. And, like, I, that actually resonates with me. I remember being probably your age and someone in the UK said to me, like, because I was living in Dubai, they were like, don't you want to move back home and buy a house before you're 30? And I remember it sticking in my head, mm -hmm. like... But that's not everyone's kind of yeah. journey and it's like why no we, i don't why have we set that as the yeah. standard timeline yeah for doing anything dipping your toe into marketing you can just kind of learn as you go yeah. and if you want a career that will keep you on your toes like this is it because it is changing definitely all the time yeah do you feel like you're still constantly learning all the time even, yeah all the time and sometimes i see like trends that are going on i'm like oh i haven't jumped onto that trend like you know yeah. that train you don't need to jump onto every trend yeah. but it's so good to just be aware of it because it does change yes. all the time it does and the platforms as well even since i've been freelance which is only a couple of years um there's so many new platforms now that we can use with ai as yeah, well, yeah. like all the different tools that we have access to the best thing you can do is just get familiar with them, learn them, teach yeah. yourself them. Yeah. And, and we have access to the internet, which is so amazing. Yeah. I always say that now in this, in this world that we live in, where we have all this information, it's not the knowledge itself that yeah. is the, you know, like the challenge. Yeah. It's knowing what questions to ask. Yeah. Because if you know that you need to learn this platform, this, you know, these kind of skills, yeah. then you can go and find it. But it's Definitely. it's people that, you know, the barrier is not knowing what yeah. to ask. No, true. Yeah, 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 not yeah, knowing true. what yeah. to ask Google, because, or yeah. what, not knowing what course to take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we have all the info now. Yeah, it's like a big library, and you yeah. just have to dig and dig and you dig. You just and have to know what you're looking for. Yeah. Which, yeah, which I hope that through doing, like, content just like this, is that yeah. we are helping people you know get to know what's out there get to yeah. know what's possible i you know this is one of the reasons that i love doing youtube so much is helping yeah. people understand what kind of life there is out there yeah. and you know if you want to dip your toe into that life then yeah do it and you can have anything you want if you really you can like you can yes how many podcast episodes do we need i feel like we need another one and it's like talk about like abundance <laughs> yeah and... it's true <laughs> but you can like but you literally can and i love that energy that's such a yeah high vibe yeah. like such good energy <laughs> Um, so you talked a little bit about your 
routine that you're aiming to have with yes. your obviously around your daughter's schedule <laughs> as well um and I do think routine is so key I also Definitely. for me I'm I love my routine like I'm actually obsessed with my routine um, I'm jealous of your routine actually. really yeah, I yeah. literally I love it <laughs> and I, I, I really really I've curated it so that it's something that I just absolutely love amazing um and people are probably listening wondering what I actually do yes. because um, I, I get this question all the time as well. So I'm still providing social media and content for my clients. Um, yeah. The difference is that the amount of clients has drastically decreased, um, which has been, you know, difficult. It's hard to say no to things. It's, you know, when yeah. it's so hard, it's like hard to say no to things that once you previously worked really hard for and I did yeah. spend so much time and effort and energy building up an amazing client list that I love but the, the comfort that I found is that I can always get it back and yeah. I'm, I'm in the stage in my life where I just want to allow a bit more of time freedom and, and you know I'm, I'm feeling I like I'm allowed to just be 25 yeah, and just definitely. like it's the best age like honestly it's yeah I'm having a great time to be honest now that I've got this more time I am having a, a really good time and it's allowed me to build this routine that I really love I've also yeah. found you know time for things that I you know I used to not have time to doing for example I'm learning Italian and oh, I have a weekly I think I told you this yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Have a, I have a weekly like online class that I do um doing dance classes in the week and you know dedicating time to my fitness things like that so that I've, I've, I've really curated a routine in my work and in my yeah. life uh that I feel like it's it's so fulfilling and it feels so like a good use of my time I think that, that's amazing because I think so many people have hobbies or things they mm. want to do and they can only do it on the weekends. Yeah. And for you being able to do that throughout the week alongside your job, that's yeah. everyone's dream. Yeah, really. I, I think it is a dream. And it's, it's, it makes me feel like it was all, all the all the weeks where I worked seven days or all the, all the yeah. days where, you know, all the weeks where I worked 50 hours, like it feels like it's so worth it now because yeah. I've been able to learn from that and I've been taught this lesson that... The best thing we can have in in our life is kind of time it and is. time to do what we love yeah. to spend it with our family yeah, to spend it on hobbies to you know to just be able to experience life yeah. and i think that's it's been such a massive massive learning for me and i think that's made making it all the more all the more sweeter really yeah. because just having Definitely. being able to do this kind of thing i just love it so do you ever feel like sometimes for me if i go to the gym or i've gone out for a coffee i sometimes walk down the street and be like oh everyone's at work right now yeah. and I, I just have that feeling of oh my god you're so like lucky and it's not luck because you yeah. work hard yeah, yeah, yeah. to do that but you yes. just feel like oh there's so much more time in the day when you're not in an office and yeah. it, you know? oh my god i totally relate to that and <laughs> you know that feeling when you like got pulled out of school because you had a dentist yeah. appointment like it's that same feeling and you feel like, cheeky and you just feel cheeky and <laughs> yeah. i'm just like even like it doesn't go away no I've been yeah. doing this for like yeah, you, three years yeah. and i'm like even even like this morning i went to a dance class yeah and being able to go to a dance class on a tuesday morning at 10 a.m feels yeah illegal like do you I'm, ever look at everyone else and feel like why yeah, are you like, not work <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what have you got to for yeah. What is going on here? Yeah. Like, have you got a note from your mum? Yeah. Yeah, no, honestly, it's true. And I know what you mean. It's like you feel so grateful and yeah. like, and like Very please. Um, yeah, totally relate to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I, I love my routine and I love what I'm offering my clients as well. I've got that room to be creative. Just like you yeah. mentioned, I, I relate to that so much. You know, I've curated a, the clients that I work with that I actually enjoy and that I do because honestly one of the big struggles I think that we maybe didn't mention enough was finding the people like the people the mm -hmm. clients not just the businesses but it's the people that work for the businesses yeah, that really right. make or break the experience of working with the client yeah, yeah you yeah. could have like the most exciting business come to you and if they're head of marketing or their, you know, founder is awful to work with and has no people yeah. skills and no professional <laughs> skills, hell no, like, yeah. it's awful. I agree. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I think I've, now that I've, you know, in my saying no era, I've literally <laughs> been able to say no to all the people that don't fill me with joy. <laughs> yeah, the people that bring negativity into your life, it's just... Yeah, and, and, and stress, and, and you know, I, just, I, I remember spending so much of last year and the year before every time I'd get a WhatsApp, my heart would like drop because I thought, oh my, yeah. oh my goodness, it's my client and I, you know, they're gonna have a go at me. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. don't want that kind of hostile, no. now when my clients message me, it's, you know. You have that self-respect where you're gonna, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah, they respect me and I respect them. Yeah. So it's, it's a completely different working relationship, but 
yeah, so that's an insight into how my days are looking. And also, I can't not mention that I am loving doing more content on my YouTube channel and just, yeah, yeah being able to put a bit more effort into that. And it's so Definitely. rewarding, honestly. I just, I really enjoy yeah. it. So. Bringing more to you as a whole rather yeah. than, you know. It's, it's really fun and rewarding, yeah. So that's a little bit about kind of what my routine day-to-day -day is looking like. One topic that I do want to make some time for um, to ask you about is how you feel like you can show up as a mum okay. and as a partner and in your personal life now that you've kind of got a new perspective and approach to work-life balance. Okay, um, obviously I've never been a mum before so it's kind of like I've done both of the things at the same time, which I don't know was if it's the best thing to do. Yeah. Some days I sit there and I'm like, maybe I shouldn't have opened a business while I've just, you know, had a baby yeah. and recovering from that. <laughs> but also I think when you do things that scare you, it is the most rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, on my, I would say on my relationship, it's been hard and amazing. Really? We get more time together, you know, when he's at home because before we were working the same crazy hours, he worked crazy hours in um, hospitality. Mm -hmm. um, but it means that I spend that time with my child and I have that bond with her. Whereas if we both were working, we both wouldn't have that amazing bond. Um, it's been hard for me stepping out of a mainstream you know, work environment where I'm always like, why are you always at work? And it kind of has caused a lot of arguments in that way. Because yeah, I'm looking at how much he works yeah. and he's looking at my freedom and that causes yeah. conflict. And then he kind of thinks, why can't I do that? But it's like, not everyone can do it in each industry. Yeah. Um, so, but then in other ways, it's been better because I can get things done at, ha at the house, at, you know, yeah. like cleaning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously you have a cleaner in Dubai. In Dubai. Most people yeah, have yeah. The, the privilege of having a cleaner. But I mean like the house will always, always be tidy so we yeah. have more time for each other in the evenings and that's yeah. a positive thing in a relationship. Um, and the same with my child, I mean I get so much more time with her than yeah. I would at work and and yeah. I think that's so interesting what you were saying about the dynamics in your relationship because I really relate yeah. to that as well. Really? I went freelance one year before Connor left his teaching job okay. which a lot of the people watching on YouTube especially will know the journey that Connor's had in his career as yeah. well um, and yeah for sure like when I was being when I was able to you know take on clients and have you know different opportunities come up all the time yeah. and have yeah. all this freedom and it was the remote working was the one for us that was that was so appealing was to be able Definitely. to go to other countries and, and just still be able to earn money yeah this was something that Connor really wanted as well. Yeah, so yeah. that was that was something that we had to then navigate. But I think exactly exactly as you said, it's it is difficult and it Very isn't difficult. available to everyone in every industry. No. So it's it's really hard. It can be really hard to navigate that within a relationship as yeah. well. Because you have, if you're in a relationship, you have ties, right? So if you're yeah. both not freelancing, then yeah. that is a very difficult thing. Like for me, in the summer this year, lots of people, expats, leave Dubai yeah. and go to their home country. So yeah, <laughs> Ma Mabel's going to travel the entire world, maybe, Basically. again. <laughs> um, so I'm going to freelance with my own business in the UK and in Spain with yeah. my baby. But yeah. then I have my family back in the UK that then can look after my child for yeah. me for a few hours a day and I can work. So that is what we're saying, it's a massive positive. Like yeah, you yeah, can yeah. just travel anywhere you want and do it, but obviously leaving your partner behind if you have to. But that's, yeah, <laughs> exactly, it's, it's, it's well, really hard. Yeah, it is really difficult. Um, yeah, but I think it's worth mentioning that there, you know, there are so many factors to, like if we could take yeah. it back to the, like the pieces of the pie, yeah. like is that with, with your career, you know, even if you're, if you've, if you've created a job and a work-life balance that is great for you, yeah. there's still all these other elements of the pie that we want to yeah. consider. Definitely, yeah. you have to think about everything. But... Yeah, got to think about the guys. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> As I was saying, remote working was such a big one for me. One of the challenges that I found with having a growing team um, kind of two years ago, I you know had, had this amazing, amazing team that was based in Dubai and yeah. it was amazing but it did then restrict me it kind of went against what i initially went freelance for was for this exactly. freedom freedom of time and freedom to travel yeah whereas then i it kind of got all the all the kind of um all, the destination got a bit blurred and i think i was then become a bit obsessed with the idea of being a ceo yeah a bit obsessed with the idea of building a big team a bit obsessed with the idea of you know taking on loads of clients, making loads of money, and kind of tried that for a bit and then realized, hang on, this isn't the reason that I wanted, that I chose this career for myself. And 
you know, starting a freelancing business or starting a social media agency doesn't mean that you need to hire loads of people. No. And I, I think at one point I did kind of think that, but only yeah. to prove to myself, it's kind of like what we were saying before, it's like, yeah. it's like you put this pressure on yourself because yeah. you expect that of yourself. You want to be the best of the best. Yeah, because I can. wanted to prove that I can yeah. to myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas now my approach is that we, I can still offer all the same things, but I'm not this. I'm not the CEO anymore. I'm kind of the consultant. The the, the, the I'm back to being everything, but that gives yeah. me that freedom again to to, 100%. to do everything. Yeah, yeah. I really do. As one thing as well that I think has has shaped my decision in doing this is thinking about the future. I think all of us, especially as women, like we can't help but think about the future. It's just Definitely. like hardwired into us. Yeah. I often daydream about the day when I have a family and it's something that I'm so excited for. Yeah. And I know that I do want to be able to have time. Ju- yeah. Just as everything you've said, you yeah. know, I, I, re- I desperately want that for myself as well. And I think there was points last year where I looked into the future and I couldn't see how that would work if I had this big business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, okay, on the track that I'm going, this is almost like the opposite I've wanted. I'm yeah. going to be chained to my office. Like, I'm not going to be able to have all the have all the time freedom and have all the kind of freedom to, yeah, yeah. you know, travel and Definitely. see family and everything. So that also shaped part of it as well as kind of thinking ahead. Yeah. yeah. And there's such a pressure on women. This is one thing I, so I said this yeah. to my previous boss in my old company um, when I actually decided to leave. I said, being someone that's high up in a company, like I was like head of market director, as a woman, it's very, very different because mm. as a man, you can have a child and nothing changes in your career. Mm-hmm. For a woman, you then have to decide, what do I want to do? And mm-hmm. it comes in every woman's life. If you want to have a family, it's career or motherhood. Yeah. And that's why freelancing is kind of the answer because you can do both. Can. And this was a massive kind of revelation for me. And I was like, okay, well, I don't want to not work. I love working. Yeah. That's like a big part of me, what we were saying. Yeah. But also, yeah. I don't want to be present. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because it's, you know, it's become part of our identity. We're, yeah. you know, we're the, you know, one of the first as well, if you look like historically, like, now yeah. women are working and we are in these amazing roles yeah yeah and now and but now it's almost like we have the expectation that we have to yeah. and do it yes yeah. so. and it's like how can you balance it all and yeah it's for sure crazy. Like, it's really difficult but yeah i think taking the time to evaluate how you are seeing that pie and how you are seeing yourself and how you are showing up in your life and making decisions towards the kind of life that you want yeah. i think by you know having conversations like this with you know people in your circle listening to podcasts like yeah, this yeah. I think it is so important to do because yeah that that was that was part of my journey was really just thinking about okay what what is this life that I envision for myself yeah. what how how does it work how and I knew it involved not being in an office I just Definitely. knew it. It, it it just I just used to hate it I found it so draining yeah. and I just felt so like draining. I had so much creativity and I just yeah. was so desperate to to do more um it makes you think like oh is this it yeah that's yeah, yeah, how yeah. I used to sit oh there. yeah yeah 100 percent relate to that yeah yeah i think having to yeah taking the time to think about how your decisions are impacting what your future life is going to yeah. look like is so important so, so, so important and so it's that, a, yeah it's important to know that you you can do you can be freelance if you want to be freelance and there isn't a pressure like as a woman like we're saying you don't have to pick yeah you can actually make the decision and there isn't you don't have to make a decision right now if you want to have a child or yeah or work like true just go with the flow like you're saying surrender to it yeah the flow. go yeah. with the flow, go with the flow. <laughs> and it will just all work out just yeah 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 one thing i want to talk about um while we have time is mental health yeah. because i think we and and in fact, so many people are going to relate to this, I think, because anxiety is such a, is so common, I think, in, I, I, I don't know, actually, if it's fair to say it's especially common in your 20s or whatever, like, I, I just so. feel like it's, it's such a weird time to, like, navigate, and I, yeah. most, most people um, listening, especially the YouTube supporters, know that I've been on such a journey this past year with my anxiety, Yeah. and I think it got to a point where my anxiety and it was almost like my body was telling me I was on the wrong path or something was wrong it felt like it was so it was stopping me from enjoying my life like it really was I'm not going to go into this like too much because I have done this before on the podcast but just to give you an overview yeah is um 
me and Connor were remote working in Thailand okay. and my business was really taking off. I okay. was just hired my third employee wow. and I was working like horrendous hours every single day. Um, I was working from Thailand, which is a different time zone. So yeah. I was staying up very late in the evening to get on calls and it was just such a mess. And I was in this amazing country, which I know we love, yeah, love it in Thailand, Thailand. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> which I own this amazing place. And on paper, I felt like I should be so happy and so yeah. I, I felt like I couldn't believe that I didn't feel happy or calm or present at all. Yeah. Like all I could think about was like trying to make it through the day yeah, basically yeah. is just like how stressed I was and how horrible, you know, and it does get to a point, I think, especially when you when it's in your body and it's the panic attacks and it's the breathing and it's the heart palpitations that you know that this I, I just felt like this is something has got to change. It was the a third, sign. It was a sign, yeah. yeah. And, and and sometimes you kind of have to get to that really, really difficult low point. Yeah. Um, that was when I decided to start doing therapy, which was okay. the first step I took. I didn't start to slow anything down with the business though, because I was so excited and I, yeah, I, I was just wanted, I still wanted it so bad. But through my journey with doing therapy and learning so much more about myself and what I actually want in this life, yeah. um, that's been part of the decision to slow down the business and kind yeah. of get off the, the the train like get off the train that I was on <laughs> that was going at literally full speed ahead like you know doing amazing what people people yeah. always tell me like how amazing I'm doing but yeah I feel like now that I've got off that train I'm kind of like whew, wow Not yeah like yeah and I and I'm so pleased that like now I my anxiety is so much more manageable yeah from so many other things but I think I the 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 point that I wanted to kind of mention is that burnout chronic stress yeah. from overworking is so real and so valid and needs yeah. to be taken so seriously and the burnout is how your body is reacting like you have overworked it yeah. and you're going to be really sick like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so sick and oh, yeah. we're going to do another podcast yeah. about health oh, yeah. because we've both been on a bit of a health journey we recently have. um but we yeah very holistic now. yeah hel- yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure being on a journey with my mental health has also now allowed me to make time and space and understanding for my physical health as well yeah. and as we know it's all so connected oh it's very it's so yeah. connected um but yeah i'd love to know your thoughts on kind of well burnout and yeah, yeah how your experiences with managing stress and anxiety um so right at the beginning as when i opened the agency i was having very bad anxiety and stress because i just like i was saying i couldn't find that balance mm-hmm. and i didn't have anyone to kind of like rely on or bounce on because when you do open an agency i haven't hired any staff like mm-hmm. even to this day i haven't hired anyone i just you know outsource it by need like yeah. a photographer etc but the goal is to higher um in the future so I feel like the balance at the beginning was really difficult and it gave me anxiety where I would be in bed late at night and my brain was like this and I'm like I need to kind of find some some way to relax and Mm -hmm. I can't ever relax and then that's why it kind of changed as my child got older I know I'm basing it all on her but it kind of is how the balance is yeah um and when she was in that routine I made my own routine yeah um and I kind of like we were saying about health journey you have to kind of put your phone down because working in social media you are constantly on your phone it is 24 7 yeah working online in general yeah actually, yes like anyone that works online will know that you know it's the whatsapp messages it's oh, the yeah. Slack messages it's the emails and you have your email on your phone and, yeah 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 and it is just like that your brain is con- and you can never ever switch off and sometimes mm-hmm. i want to throw my phone over there or delete instagram i can't do yes. instagram because yeah, yeah, it's yeah, my yeah. job <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Oh my so, God, yeah. I, I relate to that so as I, well. I just i feel like you have to within yourself find that kind of peace and and what relaxes you and what's mm. going to take your mind off it go for a walk um so anxiety is a huge part of it because also you're proving to yourself to make your own company yeah. you're proving to all the other people that are watching you and judging you yeah because there's a lot of people that will watch you and not support you or they'll mm. kind of not be jealous but they don't actually think you're going to do it and you're kind yeah. of trying to prove to those people that you can even though you shouldn't because yeah it's not important in any way yeah so you have to just tell yourself look i'm doing this for this reason and yeah and that's what you're doing it for, and it's like. very hard it, it, oh, it's yeah. very difficult um it does take a lot of mental strength and i think yeah. we, we should both be very proud of oh yeah definitely. ourselves let's take a moment well, to just 
we should be sure. really proud of ourselves but yeah I, I really I know that anyone there's especially in Dubai actually there's a lot of new businesses small businesses yeah it's in the past few years especially since Covid and I see so many people you know that I used to work with or that I'm following Instagram and they've got their own business now and I just think yeah like I know how hard it yeah, is and yeah. I, I see what you're doing and all the work that you're putting in and Definitely. it is yeah, difficult but it's very supportive though like we're it obviously two different yeah. agencies and we support each other we're not competitive true and, true. and I think that just goes to show how much opportunity there is here yeah. in Dubai because we we never I've never felt like I'm in competition with other freelancers agencies because there really is enough opportunities for everyone yeah which is one of the benefits of starting a business here in Dubai okay. because it is just just growing yeah. so much and there's just so much more but with all yeah. that so much more and all that more 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 is I think there is a tendency for burnout and chronic stress Definitely. and um, yeah you know anxiety yeah so we're coming to the end of the time in this podcast. I do feel like I could sit here for another few hours, but we're not going to do that. We're going to move on with the day. Um, I think one kind of closing thought that I'd love to leave people with is to just bring it back to the pie that we mentioned earlier and to think about how you're showing up in your life in different areas. Uh, take a moment to reflect on how you're showing up in work and is it kind of taking over your whole life and if it is what areas could you maybe give a little bit more attention and love to um you know even i know so many people um that often times when they've fallen into a habit of just being so dedicated to their career and career orientated and you know that is amazing and admirable to do Definitely. when you love your career um but remembering that you're also you know a friend or you're also you know someone's daughter or son yeah. or you're also you've got people around you that you can you can nurture those relationships it's not just hobbies people yeah, always yeah. say to me i've got no hobbies and i'm like <laughs> that you know there's so so much to experience here in this life and when you True. think about what really fills up your cup just yeah that's a good point. taking taking time to analyze that yeah no, I agree, and there's, there is, like you're saying, there's so much to do in life, mm -hmm. and sometimes, I mean, I've been in Dubai almost 10 years, and sometimes I think, like, wow, like, my 20s, I have had the best time ever, yeah. and a lot of my friends my age back home, kind of, like, they were messaging me, like, you look like you're having the best time, yeah. like, you're so lucky, and I'm like, well, actually, anyone can move here, like, yeah. anyone can, and yeah, I've yeah. seen so many people actually move here, um, and it's you just need to make the most of every single day yeah and even if you are working like just make sure you make the time to do things on the weekends or your day off you know what I just want to like while we have time is actually just um yeah it's just to go a bit further on that because yeah. what I think about people that have moved out of their home country and that are experiencing a new culture a new way of life yeah you know falling in love with the world again basically is what I felt like happened to me was just like oh there's so much more to life yeah is even if you do move home or even if you are living somewhere you can still bring that same attitude and that same love for life and that same yeah. you know that same wanting to make the most of yeah. every day like you can bring that energy um you can bring that energy into yeah. wherever you are in the world and yes it can seem really hard I, I, I often think back to myself when I was like 22 and I was working so hard and I was so overwhelmed and I felt like I couldn't enjoy my life at that point yeah. because work had taken over. You're just exhausted, You're just too you? exhausted like, yeah. to do that. And I know I know it is difficult, but yeah. there is there is ways that it will get better and there yeah. is ways to do that. And you Definitely. can still bring that energy to, you know, make the most out of your life and feel like yeah. it's it's worth living and that you yeah. you know you can build this life that you were obsessed with yeah oh definitely and you only need to prove it to yourself you don't need to prove it to anyone else anyone yeah. else's opinion so true and your definition of what a life you're obsessed with is going to be so different to yeah everyone else's oh for sure definitely so i think one thing that we want to leave you with is this idea that it can get better and you can give definitely. more to other areas and find that balance and curate yeah. that life that you're dreaming of you know and if you're scared to do it honestly being scared is the the biggest thing like that's where the growth happens it, it, honestly it does ready like, or not that's where the yeah that's where, where the growth happens like, if I, if jump I, in. yeah it, like last year when i was sitting in my office like before all of my life completely did 360 yeah. i dreamt of this moment like i remember like looking at mabel doing this isn't that traveling working yeah. i was like oh i just i really want that and i did yeah. it and it's like anyone can do it yeah and it like you're saying just make make it happen make the balance happen yes using people even if you don't know them personally for me it was people that i followed online um for you maybe it was me yeah, no, like, yeah. whatever it is is using those people as inspiration um sure. using those that you know every time you see um you get a hint of something that you want yeah or you get a hint of like in fact this is i feel like i could talk even more about this <laughs> um, and we're meant to be wrapping up but 
one thing that came up for me in therapy recently was thinking about um, what is jealousy? Because I, mm -hmm. when I was traveling last year, I looked at some people um, that I met while I was traveling and they didn't have a business. They didn't even have a career. They were yeah. working at a supermarket. And there was a part of me that was like weirdly jealous. And I was <laughs> like, hang on, why am I feeling jealous? And what I realized is that I was jealous of the freedom. And okay. I was jealous of the fact that they had all this freedom and they didn't have any ties. Yeah. And jealousy and envy can show us sometimes what part of ourselves that we feel like we're missing. And there's some energy yeah. there that we kind of need to That's tap really into. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, Because really obviously, you know, like... I wasn't saying, oh, I really desperately want your life. Yeah. But I was saying, it was more of this kind of attitude to like, hang on, let me think about why I'm feeling this envy and yeah. why I'm feeling this like, like FOMO. It's yeah, actually yeah. what it is. It's not even True. envy, it's FOMO. It's it's feeling like, oh, I could be doing that. Yeah. And like, when you feel like that, that, you know, use that as inspiration yeah, and yeah, let yeah. it propel you. Don't, don't let, ever let it manifest as like, jealousy and bitterness um it's always yeah. about inspiration and finding ways to take inspiration from yeah whoever yeah. that person is however it shows up yeah <laughs> i guess you're looking at like the holes in your life that you need to fill what you're looking at another person yeah and it's kind of in that way like fill those holes with what you think is missing yeah because, yeah yeah because yeah i guess it's not jealousy it's just envy in a in a good way like yeah. i want it's that. normal to be envious of oh people. yeah it's normal to want things and it's normal to when you have a need that's not been met that's so normal to yeah. to have that show up and it can feel quite uncomfortable um yeah no that's really i think there's some really good points and kind of food for thought here jess it's been so fun having you on the podcast i'll see you in our next episode yeah, because definitely. we have so much to talk about um <laughs> let us know what you guys thought of this episode um let us know in the comments what you've been thinking um, and leave us a like and be sure to subscribe if you've not done already and jess thank you again thank you so much for having me thanks for watching everyone